What's up, I'm Skilla, and this is Nerd Stuff with Skilla. Today, we are going to talk about the first episode of American Horror Story Cult. Before we talk, spoilers, duh, of course that's going to happen. Secondly, if you are somebody who gets offended by same-sex relationships, you probably just want to steer clear this season. If you're going to get all mad about that, you might as well just not even watch it. There is no point in watching it if it's going to upset you like that. If you feel like you're going to be offended by them portraying the conservative point of view as pretty militant, then probably don't. You're not going to really like it. If you're going to be offended by them kind of treating some of the liberal mindsets as being a little bit too wimpy, I guess, then you might as well just steer clear of it because I really feel like that's kind of what they're insinuating with one of the main characters. Uh, so if all of that's going to upset you and it's going to not let you enjoy the season, then you might as well just not even watch it. Go watch some Real Housewives. I don't care. I'll start with the synopsis and then move on to how I felt about the episode, what I think's coming, that kind of stuff. We open up with a recap of the 2016 presidential race. Uh, we then see Kai watching the election results come in. He throws out an F-bomb on network television. I was like, what? Then we cut to Allie and her crew and how they're dealing with the election. I think that this first little scene really tries to show the juxtaposition between the characters of Kai and Allie. Um, it seems like Allie really needs to be coddled through these results and that it has prompted Kai to action. It has made him feel empowered. The two main characters, Allie and Ivy, have a son named Oz or Ozzy sometimes. We learned that there's a girl who is in some way, like she knows Kai, like they live in the same building or something. It isn't really clear about what their relationship is at this point. They definitely know each other. They definitely live in the same building. We learned that Winter started off as a liberal and she says that she's worried that about where she might be able to go and get an abortion and she's upset that cnn didn't give a trigger warning before they gave the presidential election results which i was like okay kid like calm down <laughs> i think that that was kind of tongue-in-cheek i don't think they were saying that it should have her and kai then share this really weird like pinky promise moment she says i'm just so scared now and he says everyone is and he seems pretty pumped about that. We cut to a young couple who are about to get it on at a picnic. Uh, not like a bunch of people together at a picnic. They're having a little date picnic and they're about to get it on. Um, and the girl thinks that she feels somebody watching them. And the boy gives a like synopsis of who um, Twisty the Clown is. Who then appears and the dude pulls out a gun, tries to shoot Twisty. Doesn't work. Twisty just keeps on coming at him. Slaughters the dude chases down the girl, slaughters her too, and then we realize that Oz is just reading a comic book of this happening. Now, Allie walks into the room and she is like a picture of an exposed boob or a penis never hurt anybody. And then she realizes it's a clown comic and she loses her mind. She loses her shit. It triggered her chlorophobia. She is terrified of clowns. Um, the next scene we see Mr. Chang, one of the people who we saw at the beginning of the episode who was watching the election results with Allie and Ivy. He is the head of some sort of community board and Kai is the only person there who wants to speak to the board about them wanting to pass a motion to increase police presence at a Jewish community center. Right after the election there was a lot of um, like vandalism and stuff that happened at different JCCs across the country. And Kai says that fear is the most loved thing by humans. Um, he says, we will ruin our children's lives to feed our fear. Fear is currency, he says, and he thinks that if they aren't given, he thinks that if people aren't given protection, then the strong will persevere. Cheng then humiliates him via demeaning him in a public setting and telling him that the election was a blip. Kai mumbles something in over his breath, but Mr. Cheng gets him to speak up and say it to the room and what Kai said under his breath was, uh, there's nothing more dangerous in the world than a humiliated man, um, which is an interesting thing for him to have to say to everybody, like, what humiliated you into turning you into this dangerous person? Because I don't think that it was just this moment, honestly. Um, in the next scene, we see a rattled alley talking to her psychologist about how their housekeeper is now missing. She says, I don't know if she's been wrangled up or if she's run away. And then she immediately moves on like it doesn't matter at all. Like, okay, girl. 
Um, <laughs> she says that the results of the election have triggered all of her anxieties and all of her fears. And we now know that she has a fear of clowns. She's got a fear of the dark. She's got a fear of particles in the air. She's got a fear of small spaces. And she's got a fear of like things with a bunch of holes in it. Her doctor then tells her that it would be wise for her to steer away from social media. She should focus more on self-improvement. He then prescribes her a, an anti-anxiety medicine. He says it's a mild anti-anxiety medicine. She says she doesn't want it. He's like, you know... It'll be good for you. She doesn't want to take it. The next scene we see, Allie is going into her local supermarket, apparently, to buy a small thing of cheese at late at night, uh, for whatever reason. <laughs> She's immediately rattled because the cashier is playing Trump's acceptance speech, and then he throws on a Make America Great Again hat, and, like, clearly this makes Allie, like, lose her mind. Um, so she's walking through the store. First thing that rattles her is a, like, dead pig thing in the meat department and I think that was just an easy callback to previous seasons let you remember that this is the same thing we've seen before to a degree it's all interlocked those pigs are still creepy they never got less creepy and then she walks a little farther and she sees one of those big like uh convex like circular mirrors that you see in supermarkets and in it she sees a reflection two clowns behind her she turns around those guys aren't there She's losing it. For the rest of the scene, she's beset by these really creepy clowns and some of them are wielding knives and they're all just kind of trying to terrorize her. And she starts trying to defend herself with wine bottles and then eventually she feels cornered enough to like run out of the supermarket, wine bottle in hand, screaming. She gets to her car, sits down, calls, uh, calls Ivy and then realizes that there's a clown in the back of her car. She guns it, she hits a light pole. Afterwards, we cut to their home where uh, Ivy is at the door talking to some police officers who inform her that the cashier said that nothing happened. All they saw was Allie running around the store like a lunatic waving around bottles of rosé. Allie insists that there definitely were clowns there, that they knew what her fears were, that they were trying to kill her. We find out that Ivy and Allie need a new babysitter. They like set out an ad for a babysitter and Winter replies to it. Um, we're having this, again, another juxtaposition type scene where half the time, uh, Winter is just the perfect interviewee for their job as a babysitter, and then the other half the time she's in another one of those creepy, like, pee -pee pinky promise scenes with Kai, and she's informing him of some, like, deep, dark secret situations, and also informs him that he is the thing that she is most scared of in the world, and he doesn't seem mad about that at all. We see a few Spanish-speaking dudes hanging out in public at night, and then Kai rocks up to them, and he starts singing La Cucaracha, even though he only knows half the words, and then he proceeds to piss into a condom and then throw the condom at these guys, and then they proceed to beat his ass. And then we see that somebody is filming this situation. Next we see um, Allie and Ivy there at the restaurant again, and Ivy's about to share a dish with Allie that she wants to get on the menu and as Allie's sitting there waiting on the food trying her wine pairing she's looking through Trump tweets because she can't listen to anything that her doctor says because that's why she's paying him right. Ivy comes back with the food sets it down in front of Allie. Ivy walks away. Allie takes the top of the tray off and in the plate is like fingers on some salad bits and then like this crumpet that's just got blood oozing out of all the holes in the top of it so she's like freaking out. And then she sees a clown, and she loses her mind. She starts screaming and running around. Ivy calms her down eventually, shows her that the food wasn't anything weird, that there's not a clown in the building, like everything's chill. Um, and they both kind of have this moment where clearly they're both questioning Allie's sanity. Ivy asks her if she's taking her meds. She says no, and then she takes one before they head home. While all this is going on, at their house, Winter is watching little Mr. Oz, so she decides to show him some horrifying, gory clip of somebody getting stabbed in the throat a million times. Uh, Oz is uncomfortable with it, he wants to stop it, and uh, Winter tells him that it's just like taking a vaccination. It's something that's going to make you stronger rather than weaker. Um, and Oz is like, well, okay. So he pops the computer back up. Winter pops out to go get some cookies. Oz goes over to the window because he can hear some noise. And outside sits the world's creepiest ice cream truck, uh, which houses the world's most disturbing ragtag bunch of murderous clowns. They all come out of the ice cream truck and they clearly see Oz looking at them. And Oz runs away. He informs Winter. Allie and Ivy get back to the house, and as they come upon the house, the street is blocked off by uh, crime scene tape. There's cops everywhere, and they run through the cop line, and they're like, my son's in there. 
Um, they start screaming for Oz. Oz is fine, but they find out that the Changs are both dead. Uh, the wife and the guy who was on the council from earlier. So Ozzy tells a story of how Winter helped him. He didn't want to go over there, but Winter persuaded him to go over and check out what happened at the Chang's house. And he basically looked through a window and watched their throats get slit by these murderous clowns. Winter immediately denies it and says that he's got an active imagination. And then Ivy and Allie tell everybody that he's actually got night terrors and sometimes he doesn't know if he's awake or asleep. And then a detective tells them that it was an apparent murder-suicide. After that, there's a long, slow pan through, or not really slow, but a long pan through of Allie, Ivy, and Oz's house. And then we come up on Allie and Ivy's bed. Uh, there's some clamoring. Allie wakes up and goes, you know, Ivy, did you hear that? Blah, blah, blah. She turns around and there's that long, old-nosed clown staring right back at her. She shrieks. End of episode. I think that Ivy is easily the most likable character. Like... Kai is crazy, um, and he definitely needs to get his roots touched up, okay? Like, I can relate to that, but still, like, just get those roots touched up, buddy. It'll, it'll, be, it'll be better. We'll all like you better with all blue hair. Come on, do, just do it. You're a clown, all blue hair. Go on and do it. Um, Allie is a hot mess. Um, she, I think, symbolizes everything about people who let election results that they don't like rule their lives just ruin everything um make them paranoid make them terrified of what's to come and i think that again not to overuse the word but the juxtaposition of those two characters like those two are clearly going to be the pinnacles of this season we'll probably see ally grow up a lot and overcome a lot of her fears while kai is trying to instill fear in people because he thinks that the more fearful the weak people are the stronger the strong people will become uh, which we kind of saw some of that in the preview for the rest of the season that was after it. Um, I think that Kai is definitely about to use the injuries he uh, accrued during his rumble with the presumably Mexican dudes. Um, he's going to use those injuries to try and get himself elected in some way, uh, probably to take over Mr. Chang's space on that community board, I would guess, uh, since he got him out of the way. I think that a lot of people assume that the election of Trump is what empowered Kai to do the things that he's doing now, but I think that it seems like he already had a lot of plans. Uh, like, regardless of what happened, I think he is the kind of person who would have taken action about what happened, whether it was positive for him or negative for him. I think he was going to proceed forward with this cult movement, I assume, uh, that he's going to be doing. But uh, I think the season's going to be really good. I think that it's going to be a lot more along the lines of my favorite American Horror Story season, which would be the asylum like it's going to be a lot more psychological and a lot less actual supernatural stuff not that there's anything wrong with that but asylum is my favorite season because the scary parts of the scariest parts of asylum were all things that could or did happen and i think that that is a lot of how this season is going to be honestly i think a lot of people are going to really dislike this season because it is very political um and people who get upset over politically skewed things are probably going to lose their minds ever again and just not want to watch it at all and call it the weakest season and blah 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 blah. I think that it really has a lot of potential to maybe be probably I don't know if it'll ever be better than Asylum for me um but I think that it's it has the possibility to be one of my favorite seasons just because I think there's a lot of elements of Big Brother that are going to be brought in uh based on uh previews that we got the little promos that we got I think that there's going to be some uh, Clockwork Orange built into it uh, because there's definitely a Clockwork Orange reference in one of the promos. I think that they really want Kai to be their Alex from a Clockwork Orange. And I think that there is just a lot of space to make this into this crazy, not in the distant future dystopia that happens over the course of a few months. I think that is definitely a possibility. I'm interested to see what happens with Winter's character. I think she's going to go and be a huge influence on what happens for the rest of the cult movement. I think that something happened between Ivy, Allie, and Kai before the season that made him hate them so much, aside from them just being gay and him not liking that. Um, but yeah, uh, drop a comment down below if you have any theories about how the rest of the season is going to go, or if you are just po as pumped about the season as I am. And uh, make sure to subscribe if you want to follow along with me as this season unfolds. Thank you so much for watching.